Anyway, okay, cool. So you just got your new Prusa. I just want to kind of go over the most critical stuff in operation. Um, I just finished off a test print on this guy, so we've already got the filament loaded. reason for that is I, one of the things I want to review here is how to unload filament. So when it's cold uh, and you tell it to unload filament, it's going to ask you what kind of filament that you're unloading. That's considered a cold unload, but we'll kind of go into the difference between a hot load and a cold load, and we'll reload it so you can understand that. But sort of the main thing, um, this is something that a lot of people aren't aware of, and Actually, I'm going to cheat here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and preheat PLA so I can demonstrate the quick raise Z. So if I do a quick raise Z, if I just hold the knob there, then it's going to say Z, and I can basically raise the head up. And the reason why you might want to raise the head up is because occasionally you want to go ahead and inspect the nozzle to make sure that it doesn't have any um, plastic stuck on it from failed prints or whatever. If there is any failed prints, what you can do is you can just take a stiff paper towel, kind of fold it several times, and then take that and then fold it again like that and kind of attack at the nozzle and then any kind of plastic that's melted on there once it's preheated you should be able to kind of just pull that off very easily yeah. just like that so um, if it ever builds up from a failed print um, what you don't want to do is just shut off the machine and we'll go into that as well um, you always, always want to make sure that the machine is cooled off below 100 degrees before you shut off the machine um, the top is the extruder temperature the bed is the second temperature there those are the kind of critical areas but, so the 100 degrees is at extruder or at bed? Uh, at the extruder. And um, the reason why that temperature is kind of critical is, okay, so I, I just kind of went back and told it to unload, and now it's beeping, indicating to indicating that it's ready for the unload. Now, when you're doing a cold unload, it's going to beep that it's ready, and you just want to go ahead and prepare to, you know, just be ready to unload, press the knob, and then just be ready to lead it away. You don't want to leave the... the the soft tip in there because if it can get hooked in, mm. then if you pull that out, then the, then the tip can get broken off in there and that can uh, get clogged, get get in the extruder and kind of obstruct things. It's not really a clog in that case. And then also, anytime you're reloading the filament, you want to make sure that the you're cutting off any kind of end that's present on the filament. Okay. A good pair of cutters is okay for that, um, the, or is best for that. A pair of scissors will work. They also include a set of cutters in the kit, but you just want to give that a nice angle. And then just straighten that so if you're near the end of the spool it's kind of curved like that you don't want it to kind of fish hook into the extruder so just by pinching and pulling it'll straighten that out a little bit mm -hmm. and to load if it's preheated you can just insert it into the extruder there we go and then it's just going to grab it and you can feel it grabbing and then it's going to ask us if the color is clear in this case because i'm loading black behind black it's the same it's the same um uh, material so it's not going to see a difference there so I'm just going to say yes and then I'm just going to do an unload one more time so we can just leave it unloaded for a travel and then another tip there is anytime you unload you definitely you don't want to let this loose you always want to use the little holes to index it on the spool and that's to prevent the spool from getting tangled because that's the one thing that can end your print is it's not clogged, but the material is a. It, it will Thanks. not be able to tell that it's it's uh, getting hung up on the back end. Yeah. So um, another thing, when you're loading or unloading, it will stay preheated. So you want to go ahead and do preheat, cool down. Um, otherwise, it will stay preheated for 30 minutes. And again, you want to just cool it down uh, before you. Uh, shut off the machine at least below 100 degrees and the reason why that is that's kind of to, that's to prevent heat creep um, if the material is loaded um, the fan is always running on this side uh, that fan is thermostatically controlled in other words like when the temperature goes above yeah. 50 degrees that fan runs to keep this area cool the temp the heated the heated area is actually in the the heat block um, below that so it's trying to keep this area cool because it kind of uses the motor here to kind of in, in, remove and insert the filament to control it's called retraction when it's sort of traveling around the print um, and so if it was molten then it wouldn't be able to have mm -hmm. control of the, the yeah. material and what happens is if in the process of kind of you know working on the machine or something happens you shut off the machine while it's hot the heat will creep up we call that heat creep and it will get inside the extruder and it will get stuck so the, then basically it can't move up and it can't move down it's basically completely bound up but anyway let's kind of go back into this stuff I mentioned the quick raise Z, which is basically holding the knob, and that gets you to this menu where you can raise it up to a certain point, and then that's good for inspecting the nozzle, which is the second item on there. Check the nozzle, wipe off any debris with a folded towel. Third one is check the top and check magnetic top and undersheet for debris. Now, by that, I don't mean on top of here. Obviously, you're going to clear off any kind of 
full, uh, this is the prime line from before the print. Uh, you're going to want to clear off any prints before you start a print, but more critical than that almost is underneath here, if any kind of debris, like this prime line, get on there and then you put the bed back on, it's mm. going to affect that first layer calibration. Right. And um, there's kind of two types of calibrate Z that happen with this machine. Um, three if you include the live Z offset of the nozzle to the sensor. Um, that's all preset when you get an assembled machine either from Prusa or from us. Um, but the cautions are you do not want to run Wizard or Calibrate XYZ because those will reset the live Z adjustment. Um, calibrate Z is okay to run any time, but the thing about the implicit Calibrate Z is it's learning the position of the plate. Like when you move the machine, when you mm -hmm. take it back and set it up, first thing you're going to do is you're going to run Calibrate Z because when the machine is, and it's cooling down still, when the machine is off, if I rotate these by accident, that will send this axis cattywampus, and that right. will affect its ability to kind of detect it, to detect the, the surface. So running Calibrate Z makes sure that's straight, but if there's debris under the bed, it will kind of learn that, and then before right. the print, it will offset by that, and it's you don't want that. So you always want to make sure that the bottom surface is clean, either when you're running a Calibrate Z implicitly or before the print, because it will affect the way that first layer goes down. So those are just simple things. Making sure the nozzle's clean, make sure there's no stuff beneath the bed, and then treating the surface correctly, that's kind of important as well. But checking magnetic top, spool should always feed over the top, so by that I mean your material should feed down like this, not like this. If it feeds down like this, it'll scratch on the frame. It'll work as long as your material's okay, but you always want to have the spool feeding over like that and down into the extruder. And then, like I mentioned, you always want to use the little indexing hole when you're storing and unloading your filament. And is there a calibration for the X and the Y? Uh, it's already built in. Okay. Yeah, that's already done. Um, <clears throat> check my top. Spool should feed over the top. Don't let the loose spool tangle. I mentioned that. When unloading, be ready to remove the filament. I mentioned that. Cold pull after every roll prevents clogs. Now, that's what that uh, little se section of nylon filament there is for. You can do it with regular PLA. I have the process outlined here. Um, you don't have to do it every roll. With the amount of printing you'll probably do in the school, it's something you can do occasionally, maybe every other month or so. Mm -hmm. um, with some of my architecture students, they're printing so much that if they don't do every roll, they'll never do it. And then the, the, the material get built up in the nozzle. This is a low temperature copolymer, so it's got carbon in it, and so it will carbonize and it tends to cook in the nozzle. Okay. So by removing those deposits occasionally, you're going to prevent clogs from happening. Okay. So um, main do's and do nots. Um, when you site the machine, when you set it up in the new location, you want to push the bed all the way back by hand. Make sure this is not running into a wall. Um, there's yep. a little sensor in the in the cable bundle that's back there. You just want to make sure that's not getting pinched. Um, the bed itself is removable. You want to clean the bed frequently with high percentage isopropyl alcohol. Um, that's safe for both kinds of bed. You have the smooth bed. There is also a textured bed uh, available, and you do not want to use uh, the other, so acetone you can use on this surface when it starts to lose stick. So the bed is pretty much cooled down. We did this test print earlier, and it's, you know, it's stuck on there, and that's mm -hmm. good. That's what you want. Um, if it starts to lose stick, that's where you're going to treat the bed with some high percentage acetone, which is just nail polish remover. 100% you can get it at the hardware store. You can get it at the drugstore. Either one is fine. Um, but that's occasionally, and you want to do that when it's cool, it, otherwise it evaporates too fast, and don't mm -hmm. be shy about it. You can really kind of like get in there, because what you're doing is you're both removing excess plastic molecularly, um, uh, pigments from the deposited plastic, as well as finger oils, you're kind of trying to work that out of the surface, mm -hmm. as well as recrystallize the polyetheramide, which is the printable surface. Mm -hmm. That's a solvent resistant, so when you're doing the alcohol, you're really just cleaning it. Okay. It's not going to touch the. It's not going to touch the PEI. But the acetone will slightly recrystallize the plastic, and it'll really get it kind of back to new. And it's also reversible. Okay. Um, transport machine by carrying from the frame. So that's just like this. That's that's the best way to carry it. Um, run Calibrate Z after moving or fixing a machine. So if you ever need to unclog it or anything like that, running Calibrate Z just in case these got rotated by accident, that's never a bad thing. Also, first layer cal, that's, a, that's always an easy sanity check to make sure everything's running okay. And then also, this particular print, this is the dual color version. It, that's mm -hmm. why it has the, the color change there. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a single color version, which is like the Prusa 200. I recommend running that anytime you get a new roll. If you're really particular about quality, it's also kind of a health check for the machine because the file is always the same and you're really just changing the filament. It should be an apples to apples comparison. It should look the same each time unless something's weird about the material or something changes with the machine. And if something's okay. changed with the machine, then obviously I want to hear about it. Um, do not or avoid touching the print surface with your fingers. Just use the edges of the plate. 
uh, don't use tools to remove prints. Like with some other printers, you may see people kind of using like spatulas and stuff to get under their print and stuff. With this, the sheet is simply removable. You're just going to kind of grab it by the sides here. And then like for instance with this print, I'm going to use my knuckle on the other side and just pop it like that. Take that guy off. And then to, re in re to put the sheet back on, you just going to kind of add an angle, get it indexed against those pegs at the back, and then just lower it down like that. Okay. Very simple. Um, don't turn off the machine hot. I've already said that several times. And then do not run Wizard or Calibrate XYZ unless we or Prusa Support tells you to. If you do run that, it will reset your Live Adjust Z, which is essentially your the offset between what is called the pin to sensor and the nozzle. That's set in two places. It's set um, as an initial offset that you calibrate called the pre-flight, which is literally just either a credit card or the tip of a zip tie offset mm -hmm. to the bed. Um, if you work on this or the position of this changes, then that kind of goes out the window. Also, when you run Wizard or Calibrate XYZ, the exact numeric sort of value that it comes up with may change. So it's, there's no point in even writing down the value since it's really kind of arbitrary. It's right. just it's for this calibration, for this machine, for this setup. If anything changes, that value just needs to be redialed in through this sort of crude process. And I have a couple of videos on that process that are very easy to follow. Um, so the cold pull procedure is a whole separate thing. Main critical thing that I only want to point out here is to make sure that you're turning off the auto load and turning the auto load back on through the settings menu there. And then on the idler door, what I'm referring to here, three to four threads exposed, is just right here, this guy. There's a spring-loaded screw that kind of goes through there. If you ever need to pull this out, you just want to make sure you're not just cranking that guy down all the way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be tight. It just needs to apply some tension to that door to allow it to grab the filament. Okay. On the other side here is just common material guides. Um, for school, you're probably going to be printing mostly with PLA. Um, for anything that kind of needs to live outdoors, probably do PET. Right. Um, that's what the machine is actually printed in. It's a little bit more robust thermoplastic. Mm -hmm. um, Quality settings for decorative objects that are not going to be sort of, uh, you know, um, scrutinized beyond 18 inches close, you know, mm -hmm. doing the upper layer settings are going to be faster, especially for class, like where you're kind of waiting for the file to complete. And you guys aren't the ones that are going to overspeed. There's also a 0.3 draft mode that you can use. And for most things, it's not going to matter. Um, these little guys were simple little prints. These are done at kind of the maximum quality settings. But, I mean, those are just silly little examples of, mm -hmm. you know, little things that you can accomplish. I think at the, and these aren't even like the lowest quality settings that I could have gone. You could crank these out in probably under 30 minutes. I think the slowest one on here was like 90 minutes, but it's at like a ridiculous quality setting. Mm -hmm. um, filament shops, um, Prusament, they're very expensive. That's the first party stuff. You can definitely buy that if you like. It's always going to run well. Filament PM, they have a U.S. warehouse. Their shipping is a little high, so unless you're buying a bunch, it may not be worthwhile, although that is also a supplier of plastic for Prusa, as I understand it. Um, Atomic, Atomic Filament is a domestic manufacturer. Super high quality stuff. Prices are good. Shipping's, I think, free. Mm -hmm. um, Proto Pasta, another good one. Um, you guys are coming from... Okay, Mario. So, oh, sorry, a thousand bucks. Yeah, um, the, out that direction, um, you know, fries. I mean, they have some yeah. filament, but it's basically the generic brands. Okay. The thing about this running in single mode, it will basically eat anything. So you can basically find whatever's cheapest. For really cheap stuff, you can go to Matter Hackers. They have a build series material, which the colors aren't so vibrant, but it's available like... Um, Amazon and o Amazon brand is basically Overture, and then you've also got Hatchbox or the sort of discount brands that you can get on Amazon, about 20 bucks a roll. Um, Matter Hackers, when you buy more than a couple rolls, it gets down to about $18, $16 a roll. And for the consistent quality you get with Matter Hackers, I tend to lean towards them. Mm -hmm. um, and they're local. You know, they're just down in Orange County. Yeah. So... Um, 3D model repositories, you know, things to print. Yep. Thingiverse, um, Prusa has their own. Uh, Yegi is one that most people don't know about, and My Mini Factory is one that they, there's the option to pay people. Um, other important URLs, just like where you would upgrade your drivers, like that's where you're going to get your software, your slicer software, and we'll do right. a little bit of that. And then also the Prusa community is right there, and then, of course, that's our information. Yep. And then, of course, I put that on the machine in case you have any questions. So yep. we're cooled down at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut that down or unload it. Let me go ahead and 